Tonight, explosions ring out as police use tear gas and dogs to end a five-hour siege in Melbourne's east. Simply the best, the racing world mourns black caviar. The unbeaten thoroughbred has died shortly after giving birth. Government workers gifted thousands of dollars as other Victorians struggled to get by. A police car rammed and teens arrested in a dramatic roadside takedown. Anthony Kudafidis unveils the team backing his run for mayor. And Hawthorne reveals a secret weapon as an Aussie golden girl drops in. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Mike Amor and Karina Cavallio starts now. Good evening. Police have used tear gas and dogs to end an extended siege in Melbourne's east where a man was holed up inside a suburban home. They were taking no chances. The drama following a separate incident yesterday when the same man threatened police with a firearm. Oh, they're going in. They're going in. They're going in. Police make their move. After negotiations fail, this Knoxfield home smoked out, a 52-year-old man marched out. With an injured arm caused by a dog bite, no gunshots were fired. Yeah, it was pretty scary, to be honest. Um, yeah, a lot of action going on, a lot of bangs, a lot of smoke, and yeah, it'd be pretty hectic inside that house. For five hours, specialist police tried to convince the man to give himself up. Heavily armed officers, two armoured Bearcat vehicles, police poised, protected by shields, dogs by their side. We could hear um, them over the microphone asking them to, I guess, surrender, come out. The man's injuries aren't life-threatening. He suffers from mental health issues. Yesterday, he was involved in serious offences, allegedly pointing a gun at a police officer in Box Hill South. He'd been banned from attending the home where this siege unfolded today. It belongs to a family member who left when police arrived. The bangs rang out over a period of around 20 minutes. The last series containing some sort of gas or spray you could smell and taste 100 metres away. And the wind brought it straight over to us. Um, yeah, and the nose started burning, the eyes started watering. The discomfort worth it to make sure today didn't end in catastrophe. Rory Campbell, 7 News. Legendary racehorse Black Caviar has died on the eve of her 18th birthday. The undisputed champion dominated in Australia and overseas. Her legacy to live on in a foal born just this morning. With her distinctive salmon and black racing colours, Black Caviar brought the thrill back into racing for all from the knockabout fan to the queen. But she is unparalleled. Black Caviar, perfect. Battling a debilitating foot condition, she was euthanised the day before her 18th birthday after giving birth to a cult. Her trainer, Peter Moody, devastated. We've all felt it. Uh, we've all had our little tear in the eye earlier in the day and uh, we move on. And like I say, now, once you have to get the sadness out of the way, you've got to remember the good times. Her jockey, Luke Nolan, in total disbelief. My favourite moments were the, the 30 seconds I got with her. It was just me and her post-race. Um, they, they, they were the ones I, I remember the most. From her first race at Flemington... Black Caviar is opening right up and living up to the very good trial. She's sprinting away. She was invincible. Victories too in Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide. But the mighty champion is going to make it 16 straight. We've never seen the like of her before. At Royal Ascot in England, the Queen met the Queen of the Australian track and the Diamond Jubilee Stakes provided her closest win. Black Caviar and Moonlight Cloud in a photo! Later it was revealed she was unwell and her trainer almost scratched her. However you measure it, and whatever your experience might be in racing, um, she's about as good as it gets. Her final race ever in Sydney in 2013, a triumph. Black Caviar doesn't let us down. Her incredible record, 25 wins from 25 starts. 15 of them Group 1 races, total prize money almost $8 million. She touched a lot of people along the way and uh, she transcended our sport. She was great for our sport, but she transcended it and she took it into every lounge room around Australia. Nick McCallum, 7 News. State government workers will receive a new bonus of nearly $6,000 despite calls from the Treasurer 
to rein in spending. The controversial payment will cost taxpayers $300 million. A cost of living crisis for some, a bonus for others. Public sector employees are set to pocket a special $5,600 payment to help with increased expenses, even those earning up to $240,000 a year. It will help them uh, pay bills and also uh, provide um, you know, uh, food for the table. The cash comes with a new wages deal that also included a 3% annual salary increase for 54,000 government employees across the state. It would need to be funded by either increased taxes or cuts to services. Well, I'm almost certain that it will be funded by both. It'll cost the state $300 million. Tanya Tesha from the Victorian Ratepayers and Residents Association fears local government workers will now ask for the same deal. And that will affect um, rates and maybe services that the councils can provide. Some former public servants will also receive the payment despite no longer working in the sector. The government promising to back pay because of delays with Fair Work's approval. The union says this is because they helped broker the deal. It didn't seem to be sensible to exclude them from a cost of living boost. What justification is there for that and how is that fair to all other Victorians? The agreement will come into effect on Monday. Beth and Yeoman, 7 News. Two teenagers have been charged after a police chase in Croydon this morning. Beth and Yeoman has the latest. Beth, they were tracked using the air wing. Karina, the pair were first spotted in an allegedly stolen Mazda just before two this morning. But when police lost sight of the car, the air wing was called in. Seven News has obtained these pictures from the police helicopter. It tracked the teenagers to Surrey Road, where they were quickly cornered by three police vehicles. The driver allegedly rammed one as they tried to make an escape, but the car had nowhere to go. The teenagers were arrested at the scene. A 17-year-old Ringwood boy has been charged with multiple offences, including being a learner driver without supervision and shop theft. An 18-year-old from Bayswater was charged with theft of a motor vehicle. They were both bailed and will return to court at a later date. Karina. Beth and Yeoman with the latest. Thank you. A women's rights rally has descended into chaos at Parliament House this morning after it was crashed by trans rights activists. Police say around 150 of the counter-protesters gathered, allegedly throwing eggs and water balloons at the speakers. A 36-year-old Brunswick woman has been arrested, accused of assaulting police. A 16-year-old boy has been charged over a deadly hit run in Melbourne's north. Police say the teen was behind the wheel of a stolen BMW that collided with a motorcycle in Preston. He then allegedly left the 19-year-old rider to die on the side of the road as he fled the scene on foot. He's facing serious charges, including dangerous driving causing death, home invasion and aggravated burglary. Two other teens have been released on bail over the incident. One year since the federal government resolved to end violence against women and children, some victims have already lost faith. Today, a new step was taken to curb the epidemic spreading in migrant communities. Not a week on from the murder of Sophie Wang, allegedly at the hands of her mother on the Gold Coast, Australia's crisis of family and domestic violence engulfing multicultural communities has been exposed. Today, the government launched one tool to help tackle the epidemic. My Oz app is a very important resource for those from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. An app might not stop a murder, but My Oz, available in 20 languages, helps dispel the myths abusers exploit against victims. A partner or family member cannot cancel your visa. Up until now, there hasn't been really dedicated information about how to get support for family and domestic violence. While the app is helpful for migrant communities, Indigenous women and children feel let down by a Senate inquiry this week into missing and murdered women. Health, education, housing is a huge issue of why people are forced to stay in family violence situations. None of those are mentioned in the recommendations. So there's not going to be any uh, monitoring. Alison Scott's sister was murdered five years ago. She's outraged the inquiry's findings delivered this week 
didn't recommend overhauling data collection on Indigenous homicide. I think that's the biggest thing is that in 10 years time we're going to not know if there's been any improvements. We will keep working uh, uh, to uh, look at what other solutions in partnership with First Nations. Ben Downey, 7 News. A tobacconist in Melbourne's north has been targeted by a group of arsonists for the second time in three months. The trio set a van alight outside the shop on Belair Avenue in Glenroy North just before five this morning. But their plan was foiled, fire crews putting the blaze out before it badly damaged the store. Police are tonight hunting the three offenders witnessed running from the scene. A stolen Mustang has been left a crumpled wreck after it struck a flower delivery van in Brunswick East, flipping it onto its roof on Ligon Street. The two drivers in the Mustang fled in another vehicle sent to pick them up. The female driver of the van was taken to hospital with minor injuries. Damage at Anzac War Memorials in Turkey is being assessed tonight as wildfires on the Gallipoli Peninsula are brought under control. But the situation throughout the rest of the country remains dire, with large cities now under threat from out-of-control flames. A flaming nightscape confronts these terrified villagers. The residents of this Turkish town try in vain to stop the blaze burning through their homes. This man screams desperately, searching for his dog, who he thankfully finds before leaving the property to the path of the fire. Suburbs in Turkey's third largest city, Izmir, engulfed. Citizens left with few escape options as wildfires continue to cause chaos across the country. They are enduring record-breaking heat, fueling the fires. But thankfully, one to the north is now under control. A massive effort bringing the blaze on the Gallipoli Peninsula to within containment lines. These pictures show Anzac memorials burnt out, but fears for the Lone Pine Cemetery and Anzac Cove commemoration site have eased. Authorities will now conduct a damage assessment to see just what has been lost. We will work very cl closely and quickly to establish that what damage, if any, has occurred to Australian graves and go through the process of ensuring a work is done to restore uh, those, if any, damage has been done. The danger now passed for these sacred Australian sites, but parts of Turkey continue to burn. In London, Joel Dry, 7 News. AFL legend Anthony Koudafidis has unveiled the team backing his bid to become Melbourne's Lord Mayor. The Carlton champion is the first to admit he's a political rookie, but his choice of running mate is raising eyebrows. It's fair to say it's not the traditional way to start a political campaign. As you all know, I'm not a politician. But Anthony Koudafidis has always done things the Kuda way. I want to make sure it's not about me, but about the city of Melbourne that we all love. It's going to test me. Uh, Nick, look, it's going to put me out of my comfort zone, but comfort zone, out of comfort zones where growth happens. Today, the Carlton champion unveiled the team he hopes will take him all the way to City Hall. Property developer Zayn Romani, former Liberal politician Gladys Liu and controversial businessman turned Wyndham councillor Intaj Khan. He's probably the main reason why I decided to go ahead with it. And a guy that doesn't know a lot about council, this guy here brings a lot of experience to me. Experience and baggage. Intaj Khan has been convicted and fined $26,000 for financial misdeeds. Yeah, we'll pay the fine and that's fine now. That does not make me that uh, I cannot serve the local government now. Team Cooter's first goal, bringing vibrancy and workers back to the CBD. Sydney's done it now and it looks like to be quite successful, so I'll touch base with them if I need to as well. It's estimated a campaign for mayor costs half a million dollars. This one funded by his teammates. He's got the money, he's got the name. The polish, a work in progress. Do that. Up at the time, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. I need you around with me. Nick Etchells, 7 News. OK, well, Abby Jelmy is here with a look ahead to sport. Abby, the finals race, it's still wide open. It certainly is, Karina, and the Magpies are doing everything they can to have an impact. Coming up, Nick Dacos pulls off some individual brilliance in its grand final rematch against the Lions. The Demons ease tensions on the Gold Coast after a week of turmoil. And we're live to Marvel Stadium where the Saints are out to be the villains against the Cats. But as you said, the race is wide open. Yes, it is. So much to catch Thank up you, on. Abby. Thanks, Abby.
A Melbourne mother has been caught up in a late-night crime spree. The culprit is now on the run. Details next on 7 News. Also ahead, the common road errors that left a driver in a sticky situation. Why, the cost of a taxi to the airport is about to soar. And later, how everyday Australians are getting paid to travel the world. A young woman is fighting for life after a car crash southwest of Melbourne. The vehicle slammed into a side barrier on the Princess Highway in Lara just before nine last night. A passenger in her 20s was airlifted to the Alfred Hospital with critical injuries. The driver and a second passenger were also taken to hospital in an ambulance. A Melbourne mother has been caught up in a wild crime spree in Melbourne's north. Two men in a stolen car crashed twice, taking out two cars in the process. The moment of impact. A Toyota Prado ploughs into one car on Camp Road and slams into another in a driveway. Zaina and Aya's mother had just arrived home from work when her car was hit from behind. All she was doing was driving into the driveway and then she just heard a big screeching sound and then just like her car rocked and stuff. She was uninjured but the whole family was shaken. And I thought the worst, it's my mum obviously, and we just ran out and all we saw was like cars everywhere. Those who witnessed the crash frustrated to hear the Toyota Prado was stolen. Get out on bail, what do they do? Go and commit more crimes. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Lock, lock them up. It happened around 8 o'clock last night. It was pretty terrible, to be honest. Everything was everywhere. There's glass everywhere. If the accident was there, how did all the glass get here? All the way down here. After the crash, the stolen Toyota broke down a couple of metres away. Police say the driver then ran off down a side street. Residents are thankful no one was injured but are fed up. We just want people to stop doing burnouts in the rain and stop overtaking people and just stick by the, abide by the law. Lock them up and then there wouldn't be any crime. The cost of hailing a cab is set to soar after the industry watchdog approved a fair hike. It will mean a three kilometre trip in metropolitan Melbourne, the Mornington Peninsula and Geelong will rise around 84 cents to $17.70. Travel from the city to the airport will cost $67, and that's on top of tolls. The change applies to taxis held from the street or a rank, not those that are pre-booked. A double driving faux pas has caused a prang in Melbourne's west. A truck driver failed to see a car driving in its blind spot when they decided to change lanes on the Kensington Street. The front of the truck clipped the hatchback, sending it into a spin. The car was left worse for wear, but the incident wasn't reported to police. Australia's first female astronaut is flight ready, but the mum of two is patiently waiting for her call up. In the meantime, Catherine Bennell Pegg has accepted a different mission, inspiring the next generation here on Earth. In a spacesuit, living out her childhood dream. What was your favourite part of training to be an astronaut? It's no small feat becoming Australia's first female astronaut. It's certainly intense, but it's also really worthwhile because in space, you're, you know, the hands, the eyes, the ears of scientists on the ground. Years of training and a life dedicated to space. Catherine Bennell Pegg's own fascination with it began when she was just a little girl. Seven out of ten Aussie kids want to be an astronaut, which is really wonderful. It's so important to ignite their curiosity at a young age, to inspire them into space. Which is what today is all about. It's not quite the mission she's been waiting for, but she's inspired these wide-eye explorers in Parramatta. I really like how she supports um, all kids who want to be an astronaut when they grow up. And I would say to them to dream big and back themselves, you know, dream without limit. And one day, it could take them to infinity and beyond. Who knows, maybe the first person on Mars will be an Aussie kid. And just maybe... Do you want to be an astronaut when you grow up? Yeah. Zoe Martin, 7 News.
Melina Saras is here with a look at the weather. And Mel, it was a grey and gloomy start to the weekend. But it did improve as the day went on, Mike. We began grey and drizzly, but around lunchtime the clouds lifted and we had some sunny breaks. The city managed a top of 15. That was after an overnight low of 10. Outside now it is sitting on 12 degrees. Overnight showers delivered a few millimetres to the metro area. There were higher falls in our central and northeastern parts of the state. Up to 30 millimetres fell in some parts. Since 9am the suburbs picked up less than a millimetre of rain and our top temperatures were mostly around the mid-teens. We can expect some sunshine tomorrow. I'll have all of those details later in the bulletin. Mike. Okay, see you then. Thanks Mel. Well, residents on one of Melbourne's busiest streets say they've been left in limbo because of a 70-year-old law. Details next on 7 News. Also ahead, a thief unstuck in Port Melbourne, outsmarted by the same car he was robbing. Joe Biden declares a Gaza peace deal is closer than ever. And Ukraine lands a major blow against Vladimir Putin's forces. A thief has been caught in the act using a drill to pry the number plates off a sports car in Port Melbourne. What he didn't know was that he was being recorded by dash cam attached to the Subaru sedan. The masked man stashed the plates into his own vehicle before making his getaway, leaving behind a critical clue for police. Residents on one of Melbourne's busiest roads are living in limbo because of a planning control introduced 70 years ago. They've launched a new campaign for the government to use the overlay or lose it. Use it or lose it. Fed up and fighting back, residents in Melbourne's inner east want a public acquisition overlay that was introduced in 1954 removed. The overlay was put in because there was a now discredited vision for a freeway utopia going through inner city Melbourne. No one here in surrounding suburbs as well wants to see a highway come through the middle of, uh, of South Yarra and Paran. The 20 metre wide overlay covers a 2.6 kilometre stretch of the east side of Punt Road from the Yarra River through to the St Kilda Junction and includes around 140 properties. It allows the state government to acquire the land and the residents don't have a choice. It would be terrible for us obviously we'd lose our home. It also means property owners can't develop their homes without the Department of Transport and Planning weighing in. The state government owns some 20 odd properties here along Punt Road and they're either sitting vacant, run down or underutilised. So there's two ways that it's a barrier and in the middle of the housing crisis the United Nations has actually come down and said that governments around the world really only have a, a, a right to reserve people's land and property for 10 years. An overlay like this doesn't have an expiration date in Victoria and while there are no plans to acquire land right now, the state government says there are also no plans to overturn the scheme. Hope Wilson, 7 News. Overseas, Ukrainian troops have destroyed a strategically vital bridge in Russia's Kursk region. Video appears to show the moment it exploded, cutting the Kremlin's supply line to troops. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says he hopes the incursion into Russia will force Moscow to negotiate and start handing back Ukrainian territory. Politics can often get heated, but that reached another level in Turkey, where a brawl broke out in Parliament. <laughs> Lawmakers had been discussing a former opposition MP who was jailed over his role in anti-government protests. One of his supporters had just called the ruling party a terrorist organisation when the first punch was thrown. US President Joe Biden says a ceasefire in Gaza is closer than ever. The US Secretary of State is headed to the Middle East as Israel and Hamas work through a new proposal to free hostages and end the fighting. Talking up peace in Gaza. We are closer than we've ever been. I don't want to jinx anything. President Biden reflects optimism from US, Egyptian and Qatari mediators who say they've bridged gaps that had stopped Israel and Hamas settling on a ceasefire. They now hope talks in Cairo next week will lock in an agreement. We're not there yet. It was much, much closer than it was three days ago. 
US Secretary of State Antony Blinken says in coming days he will make his ninth trip to Israel since the war with Hamas flared last October. There's the hope, while a peace deal appears close, that Iran will delay promised retaliatory strikes on Israel for the killing of Hamas leader Ishmael Haniya cooling the threat of a wider war. And in Gaza, the prospect of a phased release for up to 115 hostages still held there and an end to 10 murderous months. But mass casualties on this scale, on this frequency of civilians, is entirely new to me and unique. A veteran of seven war zones, Dr Javed Abdelmonam, speaking as local officials say Gaza's death toll climbs above 40,000. When will enough be enough? There is no more to say. It's happening in front of everybody. We're all watching. Tim Lester, Seven News. We're just one sleep away from TV's night of nights with the biggest names in the business vying for Logie's glory. There's no Great shortage of familiar faces Sonny in the running, inclu oh, including Larry Emder and Sonia Kruger so up for the coveted gold Logie. There are plenty of other nominees from the Seven family across several categories too. That includes Michael Usher for Best News or Public Affairs Presenter. It's not too late to vote. You can head to the TV Week Logies website. Succession star Sarah Snook has a new double act right here in Melbourne. Coming up, we'll tell you about her next TV series bringing thousands of jobs to the city. Plus, a resort-style house in Melbourne's north goes on the market. Golden Girl at Ariane Titmus crashes Hawthorne training her message ahead of the finals race. And getting paid to go on holidays, it sounds too good to be true. So is it? Find out after sport. A four-year-old girl has become the victim of a dingo attack on Kagari, formerly Fraser Island. Rangers say a large group of people, including eight kids, were fishing with a pack of dingoes circling nearby when one of them attacked. A doctor on the island examined the girl's chest lacerations and suggested she be flown back to a mainland hospital where she remains tonight. A touch of Hollywood is coming to Melbourne with the city providing the backdrop to a new TV thriller. Star of the silver screen, Sarah Snook, will bring the best-selling novel All Her Fault to life. She'll be both lead actor and executive producer. Here's a toast to me. I'm sure <laughs> I'm right. Filming begins later this month. It will reportedly create more than 2,000 local jobs and inject $70 million into the economy. If you're sick of seeing everyone's holiday photos, you can create some FOMO of your own with this week's Property Pulse. Melina Saris went to check out a resort-style house in the suburbs with everything you need for a holiday at home. It's the ultimate entertainer's home with not one but two movie theatres and outside boasts a pool, a spa and a sauna. There are so many inclusions you could never possibly be bored. The current owners built the house in 2015 and have regularly updated the property. Take a trip to 47 Montville Street, Doreen. Inside has all the inclusions of a five-star hotel. Outside, a private and exclusive luxury resort. The property of this caliber doesn't come to the market quite often. There are four bedrooms, all with walk-in robes and three bathrooms throughout the home. In the gourmet kitchen, all cuisines are catered for with a pizza oven and a teppanyaki hot plate. There are three family rooms plus a cinema with electronic chairs for that gold class comfort. How are we doing? So, so far, so good. We're, uh, we're right on schedule. The second theatre is outside. You can watch a movie right next to the 11 metre pool. And within the Balinese style pool house, a two person infrared sauna and a hydrotherapy spa. A second kitchen is al fresco with blinds so you can use the area even during the cooler months. The gardens perfectly manicured, the current owners landscapers. We are waiting uh, the, the right buyer to coming in and which can take over the property and enjoy for the coming years. 
Doreen is a fast-growing suburb 29 k's northeast of the city. The median house price is $742,000, up 3.8% in the past 12 months. 453 properties have sold here in that time. The shops, uh, banking, all the food, eatery, everything is in a walking distance. So has got the good schools as well. There aren't many houses in this price range in the area. The property is listed for $1.8 to $1.95 million. Melina Cyrus, 7 News. A sea of yellow has overrun the ocean in Melbourne's southeast, with 300 swimmers in daffodil caps braving the freezing conditions for charity. The spectacular site at Mordialic marks the biggest daffodil dip ever. The annual event raises funds to end cancer, which will affect half of all Australians by the age of 85. Hawthorne has unveiled a secret weapon ahead of its finals push with Aussie golden girl Ariane Titmus, a surprise guest at training. The Hawks are hoping her Olympic success rubs off in their stunning charge to September. These two know a thing or two about winning medals. Die-hard Hawks fan Ariane Titmus showing off her collection of Paris hardware as the Hawks hope for some hardware of their own. The advice of Australia's princess of the pool worth its weight in gold. I'm fangirling just as much as they're probably like fanboying me. Like I'm such an avid footy fan, so um, I'm loving this as much as it, hopefully they are. I don't know, I think they were a bit surprised, but a few of them actually asked some really good questions about, you know, not having much time off training, how I deal with that, mentality, staying on top of the mental side of things, um, dealing with pressure. The last point, the most relevant, if the Hollywood Hawks want to join Titmus with golden memories of 2024. You don't want to leave anything to chance, so um, tomorrow they should go in there with the mentality of smashing the tiger as much as they can. <laughs> That's the long and the short of it. As for swimming's golden girl, some well-deserved R&R on the cards. I'm definitely so proud to defend my 400 title. I think it's definitely harder to defend than win your first one, so that gives me immense pride. It is a bit of a pinch your moment when you're walking around the village and it's kind of like Disneyland. There's just superstars everywhere and I'm a part of that. And Simone Biles was around a little bit. There's always a few basketballers. I'm still on a bit of a high, so I'm enjoying it. Um, this weekend's going to be the highlight with the footy, so I'm looking forward to it. As for the game... Tip, Hawks by 70. Gold. Theodoropoulos, 7 News. Is there anything that it's she can't do? <laughs> Abby Jelmy is back with sport. Abby, Nick Dacos, he's putting on a show at the MCG. Well, Karina, finals might be a long shot, but that hasn't stopped the Brownlow favourite. Up next, the Magpies won't die wondering in a blockbuster grand final rematch. Jack Viney winds back the clock with a vintage performance to silence his critics. A big, big sound emerging from Greater Western Sydney. And a dream debut for an instant hero in the Premier League season opener. Welcome back. Nick Dacos has been unstoppable with Collingwood's finals hopes hanging by a thread. The Pies superstars kept his team alive, but four goals to Joe Danaher has the Lions in front. Keen to land the knockout blow to Collingwood's finals hopes, the haymaker came early. 17 inside 50s to 6 in a ferocious first quarter blitz. It wasn't the most convincing of kicks, but it doesn't matter. A four-goal run, putting the Pies on the canvas. Two to Smoke and Joe as the Lions roared to a 31-point lead. Hoskin Elliott finally landing a blow of his own. That's what the Pies needed. The margin back to 17 after McStay's strong grab and goal. The stage then set for Nick Dacos. And now an opportunity for Dacos. Breaking clear. The little maestro. Inside 50. Inside 40. And closing it out. Jumping for joy. Even the usually calm Craig McRae couldn't resist as Dacos cut loose. Back-to-back -back goals bringing the Pies within a kick. Like lightning! What will he give us next? The superstar producing a quarter for the ages. Two goals, 13 touches, putting Collingwood on his back, cutting the margin to just five. Not to be outdone, Danaher's lone hand threatened to send the Pies on an early summer break. His third and fourth coming in a hurry. Danaher and Cameron are both there. In the air, it's Joe! Neil on target in his pursuit of a third Brownlow medal. The pressure went through the roof. Wayward Brisbane kicking, leaving the door open. Usually a poor tactic against good old Collingwood. Theodoropoulos, 7 News. 
Jack Varney has refused to guarantee his future at the Demons despite a pressure-easing win over the Gold Coast. The Suns could have used Jack Lukosius, who kicked five goals with 25 touches in the VFL, Melbourne running out 54-point winners. A week under siege with unrest in the camp, a trip to the Gold Coast helped ease the tension. Come away with a mission, you galvanise as a group and get a really strong uh, result today. It's, uh, it's great for our group right now. And the Demons were on from the outset. Turner turns him inside out. A nasty knock in this marking contest forced Max Gorn from the field. He needed some running repairs, a six-point lead at half-time extended by Colton Tholstrup with an unusual celebration. Harrison Petty provided a marking option up forward and had three for the afternoon. That'll work back. Oh. What about that? How's the bend and the beauty? But the day belonged to Jack Viney, 30 touches and two goals. And bends it magnificently. He has put on a clinic on the Gold Coast, Jack Viney. And you're not going anywhere? Nah, no. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get through the season and we'll see how it pans out. There were top four ramifications for GWS and Frio. Normally can create something. That's all he needs. The skipper delivers. Jesse Hogan couldn't be stopped. Hogan! The best forward in the comp on target inside 50. It was a frantic final term as both teams went goal for goal. Lays it off to Frederick. Maybe that was the better option. A crucial 50 metre penalty left the Dockers deflated. Hogan's half a dozen extending his lead in the Coleman medal race. Oh, he's been enormous, Jesse Hogan. GWS taking a giant step in locking in a top two spot while the Dockers are in danger of slipping outside the eight. Tim Hipsley, 7 News. Geelong can take a massive step in securing a spot in the top four tonight. Chief footy reporter Mitch Cleary is inside Marvel Stadium for the big clash with the Saints. And Mitch, Ross Lyon we know would love to spoil the party for the Cats. Well, Abby, win this and Geelong can all but secure that all-important double chance. This, though, their only game at Marvel Stadium for the entire season. There's no late changes for either side. That Mitch Duncan is a bit of a surprise as the Cats sub Hugo Garcia in the vest for the Saints. Now, Paddy Dangerfield was instrumental in that final quarter win over the Dockers last week and will take some stopping even at the age of 34. The Saints have 10 players playing tonight without a contract for next year. Plenty to prove in their second last game of the season. Yeah, yeah, huge, isn't it? So, um, you know, I think not only for us, but guys that uh, potentially aren't here next year, it's, it's, they've got a lot to play for because they're arguably on display and um, trying to, you know, get the interest of other teams and all that kind of thing. You see some guys lose a step, but uh, with Paddy, it, it definitely hasn't, hasn't been that way. And, um, yeah, I think it's, it probably just speaks to the freak of, freak of nature that he is. Uh, he's sort of been that way his whole career. Now, there's no timeline still on Cam Guthrie's return from that nagging uh, Achilles injury. The Cats are hopeful that he might play again this year, but he is slowly running again. So there is some optimism, but it now appears the Cats will need to go deep in September if he is to be seen again in 2024. Abby? Thank you, Mitch. Brad Scott is refusing to guarantee Dyson Heppel a farewell game next week against the Lions at the Gabba. Essendon's season is effectively over after last night's 39-point loss, a game that didn't include their former captain, who announced his retirement during the week. He is as, as strong as I am on you know, our seasons. We're st we were still in the contention. Uh, we pick our best team, and that's what we did. And um, you know, That's what everyone would expect us to do. The Swans spent the day with fans outside Marvel Stadium this morning. Only a miracle from the Giants' all port could stop them from securing the minor premiership. In Tassie, the Supercars title race is really heating up. Nick Perkat claimed his second win of the season to start the Tasmania Super Sprint. In second place behind him, Chas Mostert cut Will Brown's premiership lead from 105 to 63 points, chasing his maiden title. We just got to get through tomorrow, get into the enduro season, but um, it's nice, you know. The big incident of the day came from Charlie Wilscroft slamming into the tyre wall, then taking a seat just to think it all over. And a $71 million signing became an instant hero for Manchester United in the Premier League season opener. After a frustrating 87 minutes against Fulham at Old Trafford, Dutchman Joshua Xerxes came off the bench to the rescue. Zerxi with the celebration on his Manchester United debut.
just, uh, Alejandro Ganacho missed a sitter in added time, but United held on to kick off the season with a 1-0 win. $71 million. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Thanks, Abs. A travel business is recruiting Aussies to holiday on the company dime. They're throwing thousands of dollars at travellers, but there's a catch. It's the travel guide Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto and Mount Fuji paying people to explore the world. You can get 10% off your Team Lab Planets ticket or combo on Kluke with the promo code FINDINGALEX. One month my videos made me more than $10,000. I'm back at Universal Studios Japan. We travel company Kluke is recruiting travellers to post about their holidays and the for cash. We flew to Japan and saved hundreds of dollars by not getting the JR Pass. But you don't need a huge following. They just let us know what travel activities they would like to do um, and then we basically sponsor their activities. Users are also given a discount code for their followers. The average everyday Aussie can even sign up. DJ Andrew Levins describes himself as an accidental influencer. I absolutely am one now. I never intended to be. I bought the best hat ever made. Then I took an L real quick, ate a Tanjiro Chorito. Anyone with a thousand followers can sign up and the content can be shared on any social media platform. Followers can then use the code to get a 5 to 10% discount. The creator pockets a 10% commission. It's just making travel more affordable for the average Australian as well. Marketing experts warn it's unlikely users will post anything negative. If you're being given discounts or free tickets uh, to an event, uh, be, obviously you're going to be more uh, positive about those experiences. Natasha Squarey, 7 News. Melina returns now with the forecast. And Mel, how's the rest of the weekend looking? Well, Mike, the sunshine returns tomorrow and it's here to stay for the start of the week. I'll have all the details right after the break. Sunrise, a new way to invest. How to get on the property ladder without buying a house. Plus, is your smartwatch making you anxious? The popular devices making you more stressed. And Aussie superstar Alex Lloyd performs live only on Weekend Sunrise. Hello again. After a grey and drizzly start, we had sunny breaks this afternoon and there is more sunshine on the way. It was cool, though. After a low, uh, low of 10, we reached a top of 15 and outside now it is sitting on 12. On the satellite, showers will ease over Victoria as a front shifts into the Tasman and a high moves in, extending a ridge across the state by Sunday night. A quick check of our capital. Sunny in Brisbane, heading for a top of 24 degrees. A shower or two in Sydney, 19 there. Partly cloudy in Adelaide, while Perth has had thunderstorms and heavy falls with more showers on the way tomorrow. Back to Victoria, our southern and mountain areas will be cloudy with isolated showers in there, easing from the west in the late afternoon. It'll be cool, but Temperatures will remain slightly above average, except for here on the southeast, where they will be cooler than usual. Around the suburbs for tomorrow, there is the slight chance of a shower in the early morning, but the afternoon will be mostly sunny. Our temperatures should reach the high teens across most locations, 17 there in Watsonia and Scoresby. And it's mostly sunny in the city as well. From a low of 10, we are heading for a top of 17 degrees, and it's a lovely start to the week. Monday, partly cloudy, 19 showers moving on Tuesday 18 more showers on Wednesday and Thursday and a possible shower on Friday and Saturday 16 degrees both days but we are sunny in the city tomorrow heading for a top of 17 degrees Mark and Karina nice Sunday okay thanks Mel thanks and that's seven news for this Saturday we'll have updates throughout the evening we're now off to Marvel Stadium where St Kilda takes on Geelong have a good night The 7 News app will give you the news you want every minute of every day, including breaking news alerts. Download the 7 News app now.